Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On. This is another edition of A View From The Other Side where we get an opposition fan from the team we're playing next to come and talk to me about their team, our team, the forthcoming fixture, etc. This week we have got Vooj from Copper 90, from Filthy Fellas. You'll just know him from, from where? From everywhere. Just the online world, the realm of, of the internet, but also the roads. If you see me on the roads, just say hi. And what, driving? Just like walking around, getting food. We're always here with the people. And as you can tell from his accent, he is a bona fide born Liverpool fan. How did it come that you're a Liverpool fan, Vooj? I think I'm an adopted Scouser. Okay. It's kind of Scouse by mentality. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I identify as being Serbian. Mm -hmm. I think Serbs and Scousers have something in common. We're not the most liked, maybe, in right. the traditional kind of media. Uh -huh. We get a bad rep, but really we're just passionate, misunderstood. And I think for me, the reason I started supporting Liverpool was it was the fans, but when I did come to the country, England, mm -hmm. and settled here with my parents as, as immigrants, it was, I'll say the refugee, I don't know what we were, but we were <laughs> seeking asylum. We're getting a full story this here, is, I like it. Because yeah. it, there's background to it. When you say, why do you support Liverpool? I can't just go, well, I can't just say I'm Scouse. Because you, you liked how John Barnes looked. You can't it, say that. I can't, I can't, exactly. Even and though was, you did. What? Well, no, because I'm 23. <laughs> okay, but no, Stephen Gerrard then. Yeah. No, it was Michael Owen. Mickey, it was yeah. Michael Owen. I was watching a game and I was, what, five, six years old. And for some reason, that was it. I like Michael yeah. Owen. Started supporting Liverpool. I'm that kind of new generation yeah. of Liverpool fans. So love for the club is, is massive. Fair enough. That's your history of being a Liverpool fan. But more importantly, as we get into this episode, how do you feel Liverpool's season has gone so far? Obviously, you had a managerial change in there. What, what are you and the other Liverpool fans feeling right now? I think right now it's, it's just okay. Okay. We feel okay. The season's gone. We haven't done amazingly, but it's a it is a transition season. Rogers finally <laughs> fucked off. So you definitely wanted clocking. him out. That was for how yeah, long? Yeah, how long yeah, yeah. would you say that you this is, personally had thought that Rogers had, had outstayed his welcome? The issue with me was I was saying in 2013 Rogers out, but then wow. we started doing amazingly with a combination of Suarez, you know, Sterling, Sturridge. Sturridge, Coutinho, we nearly won the league and it became Rodgers is amazing, but I think it was more the team was amazing. Mm -hmm. And then when we saw the reality of when Suarez left, the, the, the people we brought in, the people that he allowed to come into the club were awful. You realise this man just isn't mentally up there for the job. You have to be honest, with Liverpool fans, we see through the bullshit. Yeah. So if you're bullshitting me that we're doing well, if everything's okay, and it's not, we see through it and we call it out, and that's what happened with Rodgers, I okay. think. And do, do you think it's possible that, uh, or probable that Liverpool, the board, realised that Jurgen Klopp was available and might be interested, and therefore that was the time they decided to let yeah. Rodgers go? Yeah, potentially, potentially. Because you're positive, you know, you think Klopp is the right man? A hundred percent. I think anyone looking for a male figure in their life, a yeah. manager, yeah. someone to lead them, would want Klopp as their as their father. Except, Do you know what I mean? Except I would hazard to say that I wouldn't bet against a lot of people thinking they'd like Maurizio Pochettino as their father as well. He's got lots of similar kind of instincts, which to me are you there wouldn't is. want to mess with him. He knows when to put an arm around your shoulder. Also intelligent. You want intelligence and humour. Mm. I don't know, I think Klopp has more humour. He has more humour, but I think Mo Pochettino might have the humour but just doesn't want to show it quite so much. Mm. Less of an extrovert. Let's be honest, Klopp, you'd, you'd prefer Klopp. No, I won't say Pochettino that. I disagree. You. you would prefer Klopp, though. I, would, I like Klopp a lot, I have to say, but I wouldn't change Pochettino for anyone right now. And I okay. don't think many Spurs would, fans would either. Um, OK, so you feel the Liverpool season's gone OK. okay. Uh, looking on from afar, you know, this is a Tottenham channel, so we have to ask you, what do you think, you know, how, how have Spurs, have they impressed you this season? <laughs> what have you thought? Yeah, I mean, what, the youngest team in the league? Mm -hmm. Overall, stroke, if I just spat on you. No, no, I enjoy they it. They are good they are a good side. I like it that they play with no fear. Mm. Tottenham seems to just go into every game with no respect for the opposition. And that's what you want to see in football. You want to see teams that want to play football. And I was at the away game when Rodgers was actually... No, it was Klopp's first Klopp's game. first game, yeah. Nil-nil. At Tottenham. It was it was all right. Not too shabby. But Origi. Origi missed an absolute sitter early doors, didn't he? And Balotelli had a chance as well. Ooh, Balotelli. Well, Balotelli was around then, wasn't he? Was he? No. No, it can't have been him. Are you I sure? I don't think he's Why played for Klopp. Bal I think, he's I think I was on. thinking maybe the last season. I yeah, Balotelli scored his only goal for Liverpool pretty much in the league against us last season at Anfield. Yes, I remember that. I was with Mitch, then he got his phone got hacked, <laughs> hacked but yeah. Just, I was yeah. watching it and I just I just remember exactly what I was watching, that just was thinking brilliant. this only ever happens against Spurs. And Markovic scored. And yeah. he doesn't score. He no. doesn't play. 
And then in the home game last season, Moreno scored that absolute worldy where he just ran all the way down there. the left-hand side and buried it. I love going Spurs away and just, well, for me, technically, it's not really away as it's around the corner. But <laughs> it's it's been a decent season for me. Uh, I'm happy that we got rid of Rodgers. It's a long-term plan and a long-term plan that I believe in. Klopp is the right man. I give us two free seasons will probably be challenging. I like the way you've dragged that back to Liverpool there. I've been asking you about how you feel about Spurs. I'm going to ask specifically which players at Spurs would you have in your Liverpool team? Deli Alli, Deli Alli, Deli Alli. I'm so pissed that Rodgers never managed to get that man in. We Steve, man Steven Gerrard says that it was an incredibly close deal to being done and then they just didn't get it over the line. Highly frustrating. I've met him as well. He's a wonderful, wonderful guy. I think he also supports Liverpool which, you know, would have been just a match made in heaven. We yeah. needed that kind of box-to-box -box, uh, midfielder. But we've made some signings on the Klopp that should be coming in, might be good. Yeah. But he is so impressive. Yeah. Even the England against Germany game, the boy's going, he's everywhere. Yeah. Not making players, box-to-box, -box, he's tackling, he's not afraid. Okay, he missed, but he got his head up, carried on playing. Deli Ali is the future of, that, of an England midfield, mm. but definitely Tottenham. I don't know if you're going to be able to keep him. I just don't know. I think Will you be able to fiend of, off that interest? Yeah, a couple of things I want to say. One is that it's just come out uh, last couple of days. Sir Alex Ferguson has said he's the most impressive so English God. midfielder he's seen since Gascoigne. Second thing in terms of can we keep him, which I think is in our favour, is because he's only 19, mm. I think the reality is he knows, and, and a lot of people know now, that since, back in the, since Berbatov and Carrick, Spurs don't sell their big players to other English clubs. So for Ali to have to go, it would have to be to like a Real or a Barcelona. And I think at the age of 19, even he and his representatives would know he's not going to go there and get straight in the team. So it's let's say he, he's just signed another five-year deal. He stays for another, say, three, four years, takes us into the new stadium, and then he'll be 23, 24. And if he wants to move to the best club in the world there or one of the best clubs in the world, he's, still, you know, he's young enough. That's what I would imagine would happen. Hmm. But you're absolutely right. If he goes to the Euros and has an absolute worldie and someone, you know, and someone puts the money if down... If you get the money in, would you, would you sell him? No, of course not. <laughs> no. I wouldn't. Spurs don't need to sell players. Uh, at the moment, we're just not spending a lot of money because we're, we're going for the stadium, etc. Which actually brings me nicely on. Liverpool are just building an extra stand, aren't they, on the yep. stadium. Spurs and Liverpool, I kind of, you know, you might, take, you might not agree with this, but I see Spurs and Liverpool over the last, you know, seven or eight years as a similar... Uh, clubs in the uh, fighting in the swimming in the similar waters, you know, kind of top four, top five. You had that one season where you came second. Maybe now we're having that season as well. Oh. And we're kind of always been fighting for the same players. Like Sigurdsson, you went for and we got him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, do you, do you think that will continue or do you think under Klopp, Liverpool will grow ahead of Spurs, in your opinion? Yeah, I think we will. <laughs> I think, yeah. Why did I even ask that question? Yeah, it was fair to compare us. I mm -hmm. did see the comparisons and whenever I played Spurs... I felt like a, there was like a bit of an excitement. There's there's a fear as well because for some reason I find Spurs quite unpredictable. Mm -hmm. Even though we have been beating you quite well over the past few past seasons, two three years, yeah. Yeah. So in that sense, I do agree with you. But you just have to be honest with yourself. Even if you're second or whatever, you you you're first. I just think our pull. I don't know if this is just me being a Liverpool Liverpool fan, but <laughs> our pull as as a club. Yeah. It hasn't been history. great. History. Uh, history. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to... You made me mention that, the history. But now, Klopp. Yeah. It is the Klopp factor. Yeah, well, if, you, if, you, Rogers, get, if you get Mario Goetze, like it's being talked about, then that, that will yeah. uh, improve your standing as a club because he's a big-name player who Klopp would be able to yeah. drag in. No, with, with Rodgers, I wouldn't have said that. Mm. With another manager, potentially, I'm saying, you know what, I think we really are kind of on a downward spiral. And we have been a little bit, but now with Klopp, there's just such a belief in the stands, there's a patience. Mm. Before there was a frustration and you're seeing people around you, you know, not really happy with the players, not happy with, with Rodgers at all. With Klopp, there's a patience. I was at the Southampton game when we lost 3-2. Yeah. We were winning 2-0. And the fans still applauded. They, you know, they still kind of gave their support. So that would have happened before. Yeah. So I think that is special. We have such a special relationship with Klopp. We're going to see him in the summer window, who he brings in. And even you, I have to ask you, what do you think? Well, I think what I'll say is, you know, we ha I, th I think you're in a similar situation to where we were last year, where Pochettino came in, it was a transitional season, he was working with other people's players, he worked out who he didn't like, so he got rid of all the deadwood in the summer. That's what we need. He also got a proper pre-season under his belt with the players that he wanted to play with, and that's why this season, in terms of, you know, 
there is now a definitive style with which Tottenham play, which is Pochettino's style. Whereas last season, you could tell he wanted those players to press high and to hunt in packs, but you know, Paulinho, Adebayor, they weren't willing to do it. No. So I think in the summer, what Klopp will have is not only buying his own players, but he'll get that pre-season on his belt. And I reckon from the first pre-season games next season, you will definitely see that kind of Gegen pressing that he was doing with Dortmund, and, mm. and that will start to, to work out for you. Uh, speaking of which, easy transition here. Uh, you've got Dortmund in the Europa League quarterfinals on Thursday. Our match is Saturday, 5.30. Thursday game, Dortmund, will the Liverpool players and Klopp's eyes be on that? Because that's your only way into the Champions League really from here, isn't it? Uh, yes. I mean, it pretty much is. Would he rest anyone though? Because if he could rescue Tino, so. for instance, that would be great. Yeah, I, no, I don't think he's really going to rest people. I think Klopp kind of goes for it. And I don't see this Tottenham game that we're going to have to play you as, it's not that important for us. It mm. definitely isn't. But going into that then, we're not going to go in with pressure. You know, against City in the league, we won very comfortably. Yeah, 3-0 straight after the cup final, cup, though, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I was at the, That's what I mean. This is the frustrating thing about Liverpool. But I was at the cup final, whatever. We lost and then you have them at home and, and we battered them. You know, against Arsenal, we were quite dominating at home. Against United recently, you obviously beat them in the Europa League quite convincingly. Not, not hard to do. But saying that, yeah, I think we all will have you at home because there is no pressure for us. This is on you. This is your league to win. We were in that position. So yeah. if we're similar, this is your time to bottle it. Yeah, OK. All right. Well, maybe. Maybe yeah. it'll happen. Maybe it won't. But um, just to carry on a bit about the Dortmund game, because we played Dortmund. And I have to say, Dortmund, the best team I've seen Spurs play in years. Possibly even, and this is hard to say, but possibly since when Woolwich used to come to our place once a year and just Woolwich. turn us over. Mm -hmm turn us over because with Vieira and Henri and Pires, all those players. I used to play a type of football we couldn't deal with. Dortmund did exactly the same. Do you think you guys have a chance against Dortmund? They are a fantastic yeah. outfit. Once again, if it wasn't Klopp there, yeah. you're looking at we're probably going to lose. Klopp is our manager. He, if anybody can beat yeah. that Dortmund side, it is Klopp. He knows every player inside out. He knows their weaknesses. Well, I mean, yeah. that for me is... It's a story, is, isn't it? It's a, is, script. it's a story. It's a script. You know what? That's it's like when you play FIFA and the script's written. I think Europa League draw is fixed. A hundred percent. Them balls are buzzing. There's no way that we're getting united <laughs> that the game before, at, you know, just out of nowhere, yeah. and now we've got Dortmund. Yeah. It was, you could have put money on that happening. Well, I agree on that one because we got Dortmund when it really should have been a Spurs-Dortmund final. I think we all know that. Mm. Um, okay, so final question, Vuj. You, I know, because we spoke earlier, very confident about the game against Spurs. Uh, you really feel you're going to turn us over. Yeah. So let us know why and then give us a score prediction. Um, we're going to turn Spurs over because you're bottlers, I feel. So I think you are going to bottle it. This is Leicester's league. The romance is going to continue. The whole globe, the whole globe, just everybody wants Leicester to win the league. They don't want Spurs to win Not it. Everyone. I'd rather you than, than Woolwich. Yeah, definitely. 100%. So if it does happen, congratulations. I'm quite happy for you. Mm -hmm. Keep it going. Spurred on. Well done, lads. But... We're going to beat you. I think that's going to be this massive spanner in the works. Okay. It's just too and, much and, pressure. And scoreline? 3 1 Liverpool. Flanagan, Three. Flanagan, Coutinho, Sturridge. There you go. If you think that's right, then you're watching the wrong channel. However, maybe put a bet on it just in case he might win you some money. You never know. Vuj, it's been brilliant to talk to no you, mate. Worries. Good luck. Have a Cheers. good one. I'll be up in Liverpool. If any of you guys are, come and meet me after the game for an interview. Vuj, you'll probably be in London because that's where you live. Uh, guys, let us know what you thought of Vuj's. Uh, opinions in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Follow Vuj on his channel. Check him out on Copper 90 on Filthy Fellas, where they're just all nasty to each other, as far as I can yeah, tell. Much. And uh, follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV. Come on, you Spurs. Come Liverpool. With April Fool's Day and the Liverpool versus Spurs game coming up, we wanted to see whether we could fool anyone into asking Beige, middle of the road, and let's face it, boring Liverpool midfielder James Milner out on a date. 